Hey, I'm Ryan with Wanda Discovers, and today I'm going to show you how I converted some of our shades at home to smart shades. Most of the shades we have around the house are string shades that are Roman shades, and only a few of them actually have a tube. So we had to get a little creative. What I have here is the Zemi Smart ZM16, which I did an unboxing video on. So if you're looking for something more in depth, I'll have a link in the description for that. For most of the shades, we need to get a little creative. So I ended up getting this aluminum tube cut at a local metal supply shop nearby. So what I did was measure where the strings were and make sure I got a width that worked with the motor that inserts into the tube. So I'll show how this all goes together, but this will go into the tube. I'm gonna take the other end of the mount and this is gonna go in here. Now it doesn't snap in because this is a custom tube. So what I'm gonna do is glue this and then just apply the pressure, leave it there, and then this will be adhered to the end. So what I have here is the Zemi Smart Zigbee version, and they have three different versions, the Zigbee, the Wi-Fi, and the RF. The Zigbee and Wi-Fi have RF. So if you're looking for anything in particular, you can get one of those options. You can also get a remote that comes with this. I already had a remote, so I just ordered the one without the remote. So let's go ahead and get started, and I'll show you how I ended up wiring up the shade in my office. So here's the shade I'm going to be converting, just an Amazon Roman shade that can go up and down manually. And if you look under here, you can see these strings. So there's one on one side and one on the other side. So we're actually going to take this mechanism off. So that, that, and that. Just to show you what we're going to be using. So we have the box, the Zemi Smart. We have the tube that's going to go up in the shade and then we have the motor itself. So you have the motor itself, which has the ports on the bottom. So this part's gonna spin, and then we have our tube here, which I already put that end cap on. So glued that into the tube that this fits in. So that's gonna fit in the tube like that. And we're gonna put a set screw in here so that will stay locked with this tube when it turns. And then, we have these two mounts that are going to go in the window. And so this is going to go right in the hole on the left. This one's going to go right into the glued adapter that we have. So it spins freely on this end. So this is how it will mount up on the window. And then this rod spins freely. And then we have to put a set screw in that. So I took this back out of the pipe and just lined up where this is going to be. And then I'm just going to take my drill and drill a hole first. Now I have the hole, and then I'm going to slide this right in. Now I'm going to take my drill again and drill into the white part, just a, just a little bit, just enough so that the screw can set itself. Okay, so I just went a little bit into the white part, and now I'm going to take this screw, and I'm just going to drive it into that white part of the motor. So now I have my screw drilled in, so now this bar will be connected to that mechanism that spins. Now I'm going to unscrew all of these and then pull this out to give myself enough slack with these lines. Disconnected this. I'm actually gonna save these screws because we can use them here. And these screws are also perfect for using for other windows to connect this bar to the motor. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pull the shade down to get as much length as I can out of here because we wanna be able to get enough string so that we can wrap it around the bar and so I'm gonna do this with two hands, but I'm gonna to try to hold the string and sort of pull this away so I have extra slack. I have this pulled down, it's at the bottom of the window, and that should be plenty of slack to wrap around the bars. So I'm gonna cut it basically right where, where my fingers are. Pieces are off, and we have the slack here and here. So now I'm gonna take my bar and hold it up to figure out where I'm gonna mount those side brackets. Just holding up to demonstrate that this is roughly where I'll mount these so you can see the string will line up with the bar and on this side the string will line up with the bar so you want your bar to be wide enough to wrap those two strings around. So now I'll go ahead and mount these without the bar connected to them. And I want to show you these mounts because the standard mounts that come with this motor for some reason, they have other versions of these semi-smart blinds, but this does not have a mechanism to pull 
this cog piece out. So I actually got some extras on, on it. I actually got some extras on Amazon that are exactly the same thing, but they have this removable cog piece so that you can insert it into the tube and then slide it up into this mount because otherwise it's impossible to get this to mount. Just to show you how this comes off, you basically pull this and then you can push this up. You might need a flathead, but once you get it over that hump, then this slides right out. So I left the bracket in this one. I'm gonna face the port out and then I can just insert one side. I moved this back just a tad. And now I have the piece here that we can slide right up. And now it's in, and then we can put this little piece right back on there and it just attaches. I rotated this down because my other window that I already did I had enough room to just stick this right here. So now the cable's at the bottom. Next, we're gonna take some duct tape and with two hands, you're gonna grab the strings on both sides and you wanna evaluate the level at which it's bringing the shade up together. So say if this is the perfect level right there, I'm gonna duct tape that string right there. And if this is the perfect level right here, I'm gonna duct tape that string right there. You can do your best to wrap this around the bar. And then once you have it in a good position, we can permanent glue it once it's working. Got them both duct taped. And down here, it's a pretty even height. And once we start testing this out, we can sort of pull the duct tape back and adjust if we need to. And then we wanna make it permanent. We can just glue it right to the, right to the bar. So now we'll set up the actual motor. Now we can set up the motor. This is a remote that you can get with it. I got a motor that is just Zigbee because I already have a remote, but you can get the remote with these. This is a nine channel remote, so you can program nine different groups of motors with this. It's easier to set the up and down limit when you're doing a curtain. So if you go up, it'll only go so far. And then when you go down, you can have a down limit so that it'll only go down so far. So we can go ahead and turn the motor to on with this little switch here. And then we can press the setting button and then on the channel we want. So now we have it paired with channel two and you can see when you go up, it pulls it one way and when you go down, it goes the other way. Just to get this out of the way, I'm gonna put one of these 3M tabs, stick it right up here. Now, one thing I will say is when you have two blinds that you wanna use on one channel, it was useful to put one blind on its own channel for now so that you could actually change the up and down limits or the mid limit independently so that when you want to pair your blind again on the channel that you already have set up, I could just set it to the bottom, pair the new blind with the same channel and now they're synced. So right now I have it on one and I have a blind here and a blind here. And now when I press up, they both independently have their own up and down limit when you set it on the channel. So it's a little confusing, but now when I press up, they both go up. Now I'm not gonna use the remote very often because these have Zigbee capability, but using the remote is super easy for initial setup. Now that the blind that I'm adding is all set up with the limits, I can add it to Zigbee, which I can easily tie into Home Assistant, group these two blinds together, and I pretty much never have to touch this remote. Next, I'm gonna pair it with Zigbee. So you just press the setting button three times, and then it enters the configuration state, and you can set it up in their Tuya app, which I don't have, so I'm gonna set it up in Home Assistant. So I have them hooked up to Zigbee now, connected in Home Assistant, and they're grouped into the same group, and that is forwarded to Alexa. Alexa, open shades. Okay. And now they're both opening together. I took the tape off here and I ended up using some zip ties and I would pull the string on both sides to be able to get how even it was at the bottom. And then I just zip tied it really tight and this ends up wrapping around and you could tie up the ends here or whatever 
which I haven't done yet, but this should be much more reliable than the duct tape. So I hope that helps show you the setup and how I converted one of the shades around the house to a smart shade. One of the huge benefits is basically hooking this up with Zigbee and getting it associated with Home Assistant. And then from there, the possibilities are endless in terms of automation, setting it up with the Echo, and just controlling them remotely. A couple of things I want to point out, I did have a few other shades around the house that already did have a tube that I could insert one of these motors in. So if you do find that you have a shade, definitely take the measurement like I'm doing right here and see if you can use one of the adapters to just retrofit one of these motors in the shade behind me in the kitchen. I was able to do that really easily with a 38 millimeter size and it has a larger battery. Now speaking of batteries, in terms of this size shade, which I'm using a 17 millimeter size motor, this will get you by for about three months. So unfortunately you do have to charge them occasionally. So what I had that came with the 38 millimeter motor is a long USB-C cable. So this will basically extend to most outlets near the window. And I just hook it up to the shade and I'll go around every once in a while and just do all of them and then I don't have to worry about it. And it doesn't take too long to charge them up. But if you do have a larger battery, they'll last more like six months. So the 38 millimeter motor that I do have will last six months as opposed to this, it's more like three. Another downside that I didn't really realize until I got one up is the manual adjustment is just not there. So unfortunately you cannot move the shade up and down manually, which I could understand is a huge drawback for some people. Uh, for me personally, I think it'll be fine. And what I ended up doing with the strings at the very end is I ended up using the zip ties, which have been working much better than obviously taping. It also is more convenient in terms of taking the motor off of the shade. So if you did want to replace the motor, you could just take it down and cut the zip ties and then you could get a new pair of zip ties and wire up the string to that. So I would definitely recommend any alternative options to the permanent gluing I was originally thinking of because that would definitely hold us back in terms of uh, replacements and things like that. So one thing that I did want to point out with this tube is I did try looking at Home Depot. They did have some conduit that were actually steel that fit this motor very, very closely. You would have had to shave some stuff down on the motor to get it to fit. But unfortunately it would have been a lot heavier than something like this aluminum tube. And this also only cost, I think when I got like four done, maybe like max 30 bucks. Definitely more cost effective in this way for a light aluminum tube. In terms of connection, getting this motor hooked up to the rest of the Zigbee network was super easy. You recognized it right away and Home Assistant understood exactly what it was for a shade going up and down. So I hope this is helpful for anyone else looking to convert their shade to a smart shade. Let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching.